Archaeologist is behaving badly. I'm Raquel. And I'm Belle. And yeah, we're doing it. Episode three. Welcome. Welcome. Um, today we're doing a Halloween episode. So we're going to talk about some stories that are spooky related. Yeah, definitely. Getting into like the Halloween vibes. Yes. And we've got lots to talk about. You're going first? Yes, I am. Alrighty, so I wanted to kind of start it in a way that kind of shows where the beginnings of like horror stories came from. Okay. Because like I always thought that they started from folklore. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and like, you know, children's stories and scary children's stories. Yeah. From something. Yeah, I've never really thought about where scary stories come from yeah like, like where they how began they started yeah yeah and so i did a little bit of research and i found that they likely started from the roman period interesting yeah so like really long ago <laughs> kind of makes sense i mean the romans were into some pretty macabre shit yeah 100%. as entertainment yeah 100 percent. um and so the first story that i could find is a ghost story. Nice. Love a bit of a ghost story. I love a ghost story. Um, from Pliny the Younger, who okay. is like super well-known Roman guy. Was he a philosopher? I think he was a philosopher and a politician. Okay. Pretty sure he was a politician as well. And pretty sure he had ties in with Emperor Nero, I think. Okay. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Was Pliny the Younger or Pliny the Elder the one that documented um, Vesuvius? Always, always get those confused. Yeah. I think it was... It was one of them. I'm pretty sure it was him. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong. But they know... A Feel lot free of- to correct yes, us. Yes, please. Please do. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so he... <clears throat> They found one of his letters to just one of his friends. I'm assuming it's one of, oh no, just some guy. And he tells this guy about a story that he's heard about a philosopher named Athenodorus, Athenodorus, Canaanites, who calls, cool. yeah, yeah, <laughs> that guy, whoever that is, <laughs> um, who was a philosopher from Athens. And um, so uh, the story goes that this guy, Athenodorus, came across a large house in like near Athens or a region in Athens that was like a pretty unknown place, just a pretty bleh place. Yeah. Like no one really cared much for it. And it was going for sale and it was going for a ridiculously amount less than what it should have yeah. been going for because it was like quite a large place. And he got really like he piqued his interest, and he's like, "Oh, like, what's what's going on? With, you know, what's going on in this place?" And the locals were like, "It's haunted. Like, don't buy it. Um, strange things happen there. Just so you know." And that made him <clears throat> want to like grab the place even more because yeah, he's like as I I would want to grab it as well. And that still happens today, like. Mm-hmm. You hear so many stories from the last hundred years of haunted houses yeah. going for really cheap. Or yeah. like even <clears throat> if they're not necessarily actually haunted, there might have been like a murder happened there yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so their value, their property value yeah. just like plummets. Yeah. So basically this was happening apparently, well, as Pliny was saying, a very, very long time ago. Like mm-hmm. Pliny the Elder was around – oh, sorry, the Younger – was around from the 1st to 2nd century <clears throat> AD. Okay. So like 2000. 2000. Years, yeah, 2000 years ago. So the story goes, yep, so this guy finds his house, <clears throat> definitely wants it now because he's so intrigued and because he considers himself a bit of a, not like a scientist, but like a reasonable man. It's kind of like a thing that it, it sounds like he kind of almost wanted to debunk it or just right. see for himself what everyone was talking about and, you know, <clears throat> if it was real. So on his first night, he gets a table, an oil lamp, and, like, writing materials set up for whenever something goes down, you know. Yeah. And so for the most of the night. Lying in bed, like, (laughs) I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to write some shit. (laughs) And after a while, so most of the night is completely, there's nothing. And then at some point, he starts hearing these, like, chains rattling and, like, 
iron on iron, like this weird like metal sounds like clanging together. And when he's like, oh, this is what the people in the village were describing. Mm -hmm. And then it was just getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And he looks up and, oh, by, by the way, before he looks up, he's already, as soon as he started hearing these noises, he went straight to the table and started writing just I don't know if it was just to distract himself or just as his little plan kind of thing. Yeah. But then, like, he looks up and the ghost, this man, is right in front of him and has chains on him. Like, this ghost is, like, bound. And, like, this guy just goes, no, just just wait. I'm still writing. <laughs> and so just, like, continues writing, right, as this ghost, ghost just is- stop what you're doing. <laughs> Give me a couple of seconds. This is my time, you know. Like, <laughs> I need to, I need to just get this down. Exactly, exactly, right. Hold that thought. And so then this ghost starts getting really like antsy and just like, hurry up! I need mm-hmm. to show you something. So then eventually, he stops writing. Guy stops writing, and goes, "Okay, like, show me what you need to show me," and starts kind of taking him down like through the house and then outside. So they go outside and then they stop at this certain part of outside. Mm. And Athenodorus marks the place and just goes, okay, I'm going to look at look at the spot later. So he goes back to bed, wakes up in the morning, grabs the villagers, tells him his story and just goes, I think there's something here. So they all kind of get together and they start digging and they find a body, a man who had been chained and looked like had been tortured or something oh, horrific. Yeah. Oh, baby. Like just looked really, really horrific. And so what they all did was they all got together and they gave him a proper burial. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly it wasn't haunted again. So he was able to like crossover or yeah. whatever you call it. He's able to move on. Yeah. What I think it's a really lovely story. Yeah. That's a really nice story. Yeah. I think so that's I think one of the first documented, you know, written sources of yeah. of a of a proper haunting, you know, being documented. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Do you have any ghost stories? I do have quite a few ghost stories actually. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I have a few. Yeah. Mostly from when I was younger. Me too. And yep. I think that I was a bit more tapped in. A bit open, a bit more open. Yeah. yeah. And drank less. <laughs> well, didn't drink. Although I did only a few weeks ago. Have you ever had sleep paralysis? Oh, my God. So I yes. only had it for the first time a few <gasps> weeks ago and there was a there was a demon it's, standing next to my bed. It's terrific. And the only, yeah, it was f- fucking awful because obviously – paralysis like I couldn't move I could move my head and so I ended up like turning away and just looking at my wall and Mm. like telling this thing at the end of my bed to leave the only thing that made me like I know sleep paralysis is a normal thing and there is a scientific explanation for like why it happens yeah but the only thing that makes me think that something was a foot was that my housemate's cat sleeps on my bed Mm -hmm. often Mm -hmm. and she like bolted out of the room yeah and I wasn't like moving around crazy because I couldn't move but she but she obviously there there was something happening that she felt that she had to get out of there yeah so yeah I'm a believer I'm totally a believer and if you're not you're in the wrong place. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've had sleep paralysis a lot. Not like not so much in the last few years, but definitely a lot in my early 20s. Mm-hmm. I had it quite a bit. And it's so scary. Yeah. It is just, it is absolutely just, it's horrific. At yeah, the time. it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah. Not being able to move yeah. at all. Yeah. Anything. But yeah, I've I've lived in haunted places before. Yeah, especially when I was a kid. Yeah, like my parents even had to deal with that. Like I know most of it because of what my parents had to to go through. Yeah, like, just like crazy stories. Yeah, That's, yeah, me too. I yeah. I lived in an 1860s hotel when I was like 15 or 16 in Castlemaine, which is in the gold fields in Victoria here, and there. Yeah, that was really fucking spooky. I can imagine. Yeah. pretty much anything. 
outside of like a big city, like yeah. any of those like you know places, especially and goldfield ho- yeah, places hotels and hotels. Well, like. They just naturally spooky places. Mm. Like give you like they give the creeps. Yeah, and old places as well. Yeah, yeah. I lived. Yeah, that's yeah. It's way too much. Way too much one to yeah. unpack here, but. Yes, we we could do a whole episode of our own yeah. ghost stories. If you want, at some point, if you want to listen to that, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not archaeology related, but we can just talk some shit. <laughs> yeah, we're good at that, so that's fine. Um, okay, cool, cool. So I also found another story about another monster, which I think would be the first instance that this monster was ever recorded. Okay, in literary history, I guess. So. <clears throat> There was a a Latin fiction, like a novel, but not in the modern sense that we consider a model, um, a novel, but more of like a a prose and verse, a Latin prose and verse, kind of um, really similar to Metamorphoses. I don't know if you've you've ever read that. I read it in like in uni and stuff. It's, It's basically one of the old Latin works that like talks about mythology and like okay. satire and and yeah. um yeah anyway so this novel is called i think it's called satiricon satiricon which is also a band but not a band, <laughs> not a band. um and it's it, a good name it, it is a good name <laughs> and it was written by gaius petronius which sounds like a Harry Potter curse. <laughs> I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but that does sound Are you not? Very, I'm not. I've, I'm like the only person you, that I know that's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know it. I don't think I know anyone that's not. Yeah. I don't know. I love I it. I don't hate it. I just don't love it. Did you read all the books? I read a couple of them as a kid. And just never. I never got into it. Which is like huh. weird for me. I'm totally into <laughs> That kind of shit. We're gonna have to rethink our entire <laughs> friendship. Oh no! Oh god! I've said too much. Um, anyway, Satyricon. It has many parts, but it basically follows this this guy who's the narrator, I guess, and it just follows many stories. But there's this one story in the novel, I guess, where. <clears throat> um, where he describes an encounter with a werewolf, the first okay. ever werewolf. Wow. Yeah, and Metamorphoses, like the other, the other novel from this time period, is very much about humans turning into animals or animals turning to humans. Okay. Humans, like divine forces. Yep. Um, so it kind of makes sense that this was written around this time because yep. you've got the same kind of themes going on. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so the narrator of the story talks is, is talking, and basically, he was at some some person's house, and him and a soldier or someone um, from his house went to go walk somewhere. I'm pretty sure there was a reason for that, but I didn't quite. I don't think I quite got to that bit. Yeah. Um, and they end up in, I guess, like a cemetery or something like that, which is like super spooky, and then suddenly. The narrator describes this guy like just like pissing on his clothes or something and like taking his clothes off pissing on them. So just a drunk person. It just like sounds like a very <laughs> So true. That's exactly what it sounds like. Just a drunk person stumbling just around the cemetery. Totally exactly what it sounds like. And um and then like takes the clothes off and just like transforms into this wolf and starts howling. And the narrator literally says at this point, like pretty much, obviously this is not exactly what he said, but this is pretty much the vibe. <laughs> like, no, seriously, guys, no joke. I ain't lying. Like pretty much like, you know, I swear to God, guys, like this is totally true. And then keeps going into the story. <laughs> so he runs off and the narrator is like freaking out and like gets his sword out and can't see him but can hear him. And he's terrified and he thinks that he's died like at this point, like because he's just so terrified of what's like happening in front of him. Anyway, he runs off to like his girlfriend's house. Okay. I get Yeah. Okay. Or his wife's house. I don't okay. know. It's just his mistress. Uh, it sounds like maybe like a girlfriend or something. One of his girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. One of his. Yeah. Something's going on there. And she's like, where the fuck have you been? (laughs) Could have used your help. There was a wolf here that, like, ate all of the livestock. Um, Oh, shit. But don't worry because my slave, like, stabbed him in the neck and he ran off, right? 
And so this guy's just freaking out. I don't think he says what's happened, but he's in his mind is just being like, oh, my God, like, holy shit. Like, this has just happened to someone that I know. And then this this werewolf thing has, like, gone in and attacked people. And then anyway, so in the morning, he goes back to the original place with him and this soldier that he met who turned into a werewolf um, were. And he walks in and there's, like, a doctor treating him for like a neck wound, like a fuck. Yeah. And so he's just like, oh my God. And then at the end again of this like little story, he goes, I swear to God this happened. Like pretty much <laughs> he's like, I swear, like I swear to the angels, like this happened, you know? So I thought that was pretty cool because that must yeah. be where werewolves come from. Yeah. And it was like in the middle of the night, it was like he even mentions like the moon and like, you know, just. That's you know, cool. Yeah. The yeah. werewolf. Yeah. origin story yeah, totally so i thought that was pretty <laughs> pretty pretty cool pretty, cool. <laughs> pretty spooky um yeah so that's i think that's pretty much the origins of where these awesome horror stories come from and i just got like another little story it's not like a horror th- like story theme. It's more of just like a really fucked up archaeological find slash cultural perfect thing. Um, so I was like randomly reading through all of this stuff basically. And I came across the mummies of the, like the fire mummies of the Philippines. Okay. Have you I've, heard of them? No, never. I'd never heard of them. Um, AKA the Kabayan mummies. And yeah, anyway, so these mummies were made as early as so in the Philippines, obviously, uh, as early as either 2000 BC. Okay. Although there's other speculation that they were actually first made a lot sooner than that, between 1200 and 1500 AD. So I don't uh-huh. know where you get that kind of gap. That's a huge gap. That's a massive gap. But anyway, I couldn't really understand where the two – dates kind of come from okay. but maybe they think it was like an older tradition that was right obviously they've got like the more they've found the more modern okay you know specimens of that but yeah. they think maybe it was like a more older culture anyway either way um so these were all these mummies were found in natural caves or man-made like little niches mm-hmm. in the philippines near the town of Kabayan. Or Kabaya. and I'm nodding, but I have no idea yeah. where that is. <laughs> Somewhere in the Philippines, <laughs> that's all I know. And um, so these, the process was, which is what I find, just I thought that was just kind of creepy and weird, just like a, a weird thing that I've never heard before. And also something that we touched on last episode was like mummies, and they can be, they can be made many different ways. You yeah. can naturally mummified, yeah. you can be embalmed, you can there's... obviously the most famous are the Egyptians. Yeah, yeah. So it's like different where they processes. Would remove was it everything except for the heart? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um anyway, so these mummies were processed actually it started before they the person was actually dead. Oh, okay. Yeah. So before they even died, they were made to drink like a salt drink, like a salted drink to dehydrate them i guess and then after they were died uh, after they they died the corpse was washed and sat seated over a fire like i guess like a gentle fire or something to like dehydrate them from like all the fluids smoke them (laughs) yeah so literally like and get all the fluids like out of their bodies yeah um also like as a side note these mummies were also like heavily tattooed which i think is really cool Mm. so i don't know if that's a um uh, what reason that is if that's a maybe only a ritual thing or yeah or maybe only special people in the community yeah 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 i didn't read i didn't read mummified in that way yeah but um they all have really cool tattoos on them like all very different different tattoos yeah um, so smoke, like tobacco smoke, was then blown into the corpse's mouths. Okay. <laughs> to dry the internal organs and fluids. Okay. And then eventually herbs were like rubbed into the skin. Yeah. I guess to like help the mummifying, the natural mummifying process. And then they were put into pinewood coffins and hidden in these little caves and stuff. Okay. And so... 
yeah, there's been heaps. Um, there's been quite a few found and obviously a lot looted. And I think now it's um, it's a world – it's a protected site, okay. heritage site. Good. Um, and there's a bunch that they still know of but they don't release where they are and they're, like, heavily protected. Because, Good. Yeah, which is cool because they're actually – Because people you. will. Totally, yeah. But instead of, like, up. taking them out and – trying to make sure that nothing happens to them they're trying to actually just leave them be and yeah but you can see them i guess at museums in the philippines as well interesting yeah but i just thought I, that was i've never been to the philippines but neither have i i would like to if i go there i would like to see them or yeah. learn more about them because i've never i've never heard of that never heard of them before yeah i just thought that was a bit of a creepy weird Weird thing. A weird cultural burial practice yep. that I never heard before. No. Yeah. Awesome. That's it for me. Spooky. Spooky. <laughs> okay. So my – oh, what's happening here? I'll leave that there. So my first story, I thought I would just talk a little bit about – and it's not a very long story. Okay. Just a little bit about where – Halloween came from. Yeah, cool. I don't actually have no idea. Well, it's not a very good description of it, so (laughs) you you might have to just do your own research afterwards. (laughs) Um, So the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, and I did actually look up some of the – because all of these sites are in Ireland. Okay. Yep. So I looked up how to say them. So it's spelt Samhain. Okay. You might have seen that, but it's pronounced Sarwin. Okay. Or yeah. something like that. <laughs> it's like I've the, tried. They're particularly like um, Gaelic, right? It's yeah. It's particularly really super hard. Yeah. To, and yeah. not <laughs> phonetic. Like the Dude. way you read it is just nothing like nothing how you like say it, it yeah. at all. Um, so people would light bonfires and dress in costumes to ward off ghosts. Um, and it's an ancient Celtic feast of the dead. Cool. So from what I read, they kind of divided the year by seasons, which a lot of cultures do because it's all revolved around. Like pagan. Yeah, Yeah. but, but cultures all over the world often it's, Do the same it's thing. by season, it's yeah. by um, agriculture and, yeah. yeah. Um, the Celtic New Year begins on November the 1st and the Celts, I didn't their, know their days were actually nighttime. So it's oh. the, the actual night of the 31st to the 1st okay. is when it changes over. Okay, yeah. Rather than the way we think of the day being the 1st. Yep, yep. That's a terrible explanation, but sorry about that. <laughs> now the wines are hitting me. Also, we're drinking wine this time instead of champagne yep. so that we don't belch <laughs> during reading stories, that which was, you might have caught in the past that episodes. Was, um, that was intense. <laughs> <laughs> um. So modern Halloween merges different cultural elements. Obviously, it's become a huge thing in the States, um, even though that's not where it started. Originated, yeah. But Um, it's massive in the States. And then I feel like more recently, like I don't really remember doing trick-or-treating or or anything as a kid, but it seems way more common here now. It also depends like like suburbs that you're in and stuff. Like I've just noticed that like some streets are just really into it. Here in Melbourne, at least, like, and some streets aren't. Like, yeah. it just kind of depends where you are. Um, yeah, so modern Halloween merges different cultural e- elements. Some are ancient, some are pre-modern, and some are contemporary. Okay. So an important site associated with the observance of the Feast of Sawin is the Hill of Ward in Clacta, which is located near Athka in the modern – County of Meath in okay. Ireland. Yep. Okay. Um, the Hill of Ward is 116 meters high, and it has a prehistoric ring fort on top. Okay. And archaeologists have found evidence of intense burning here, dating to around 500 AD or CE. Okay. From the. Okay, so it's the been bonfire. like a, a, like one yeah. and a half thousand years, pretty much. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um. 
In 2014, a 3,000-year-old skeleton of a baby was discovered at Clacta. The baby was around 10 months old when it died and was found at the base of a one and a half meter ditch. Shit. The site obviously is a key ritual site, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but there wasn't actually any evidence of how the baby died. So there okay. was no like. Like visible trauma to like yeah. the bones or anything to. And okay. they don't know really anything about it and there's not really any way to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, babies can also just die from like natural causes yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah, absolutely. Especially back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another famous site is Rathcroen, which is further to the west from Clacta. Mm-hmm. Um, and Rathcroen. Rathcroen, it's spelt Rathcrogan, so I keep reading that. <laughs> it's Rathcroen. Okay. Um, is spread acro- across two square miles of agricultural land. Okay. I think now it's like, it just looks like, like there's sheep grazing on it. It's okay, yeah. Like, like farmland. Farmland, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Paddocks and stuff. Um, but it encompasses 240 known so there might be more archaeological sites wow. within within the two square miles wow and the oldest of which they know dates back five and a half thousand years Holy but shit. it hasn't been fully excavated or anything okay, like it's yeah. barely been excavated at all um so all these sites include burial mounds ring forts standing stones linear earthworks and iron age an iron age ritual sanctuary and a cave site called Oanagat, um, which is also known as Cave of the Cats or mm. also known as the Gates of Hell. Okay. Just casually, <laughs> the Gates of Hell. Yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't look up why it's called Cave of the Cats. So that's something I don't I, I don't know anything about. Um, also interesting, like I've never even heard of this. No, of this place nor, before. nor had I before. So it's like a pretty major archaeological yeah, but area. There's no signage that oh, okay talks about Halloween or yeah, like I don't think there's that much signage at all. Yeah, okay. it's not like a, it's a tourist bit. destination. It's yeah. sort of more but kept understated. quiet. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> festival goers to yeah. Sarwen, the festival. They may have, during the festival, traded, feasted, played games, made declarations of war and peace, um, married, made ritual offerings, um, and the the ritual offerings were possibly to the myriad of beasts, monst- monsters, demons, and spirits um, of islands like a mythological, the other world. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, and like the stories go, during Sarwen that night, some of the creatures would escape from this particular cave. Okay. Um, so it's kind of like a threshold. Yeah. You know, like between and the two worlds. The cave is yeah. as well as the night yeah. of Sarwen is. Yeah. Like when the invisible wall between living yeah. and the other world disappears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so people protected themselves by lighting fires. Okay. And by dressing as ghouls. Okay. So like that to hide themselves amongst the ghouls. So that the it. ghouls wouldn't capture them and take them. Yeah. Back. I love it. Yeah. Um, which is, I think, where dressing up. Yeah. Comes from. Yeah. Um, some re- researchers say that. The Rathcorn site might be Europe's largest unexcavated royal complex. Wow. Oh. Which is huge. That's massive. Yeah. So most of the study there has been done from non-invasive methods. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think there's been maybe some smaller. Targeted excavations. But, yeah. But very small. Yeah. Um, and then some stuff that's been like not at the site, but kind of. Mm -hmm. around the area Mm -hmm. where they've gotten artifacts from and stuff. Um, Owenagat 
the cave site is also the birthplace of Ireland's most famous queen, Queen oh. Maeve. Oh, who, wow. I don't know if you know about her. But I've she definitely was, heard of her. Yeah, She was a bad bitch. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what, and there's deal? like... There's like not actually – so some people believe that she was real. I think she was maybe AD or CE, same thing, um, around like 50 or 70, so 2,000 years old. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's been – she's like heavily in mythology. Yeah, yeah. And there's not that much evidence of – the real her yeah okay yeah but she's still a lot of people assume that she was, she was a real real, real that, queen. that's really common yeah that's really common especially in like britain and ireland yeah. and scotland and stuff you know um you know these people that are supposed to it's like it's just too long of a period with not enough literary or like documented evidence to be yeah. like was she actually or were they actually um so that yeah that totally makes sense yeah but she was really cool um I might have to, I don't know if we do one on Queens, I might. Yeah, that. definitely. Let's do um, it. <laughs> and the last thing I wrote was that Ireland has been trying to get Rathcrawan as a UNESCO listing. It's not currently, but they've been trying. Interesting that it hasn't already been. Yeah, you'd think it, uh, you'd think it would. Totally. It's a pretty significant place. Yeah. So that's one. Okay. Done. Done. Okay. So my story number two, I went for something a little bit more well-known. Okay. Um, the Curse of the Pharaohs. Okay. Yeah. So lots of us know lots about ancient Egypt. It's been heavily glamorized mm -hmm. over the last 100, 150 years yeah. um, and – a lot of that has been to do with the mystery surrounding the civilization itself, its origins, its religion. Yeah. Um, the ancient Greeks admitted that much of their ancient wisdom mm -hmm. actually came from Egypt. Yeah. Lots of stuff, mathematics, science, totally. art, architecture, philosophy. Like totally. Lots of it was just actually ripped from and ancient I think, Egypt. I think, like, it's so fucked. Like, I think we've been, like, told that everything kind of came from Greece. Everything kind of came from the Romans. And then Egypt was, such like, such a separate entity. And it's, like, it's totally fucking untrue. Like, yeah. it was – there was so much that was taken yeah. by by Greece, by the Greco-Roman, you know. Yeah. It, it, there's so much. Way more that, than what you that know. You so think. many of the very famous, oh, they're all called philosophers, um, philosophers, would yeah. would go to Egypt yeah. and learn stuff yeah. and then take it back, and we kind of just get taught that they <laughs> they did it. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. All lie. So the curse of the pharaohs is an alleged curse okay. cast upon anyone who disturbs a, an Egyptian burial, okay. like any Egyptian burial, mm -hmm. but especially a, a pharaoh. Yeah. Um, and they cause you don't bad luck, them. illness, death, mm -hmm. all kinds of bad shit. Um, all the bad things. Stories of the curse of the pharaohs dates back to medieval times and they've kind of shifted from just condemning the disturbance of the spirits mm -hmm. to the more crazy stuff that we see in movies and stuff now. Yeah. Um, I the love a good curse in, like, in films. <gasps> love. I love it. I just recently watched The Mummy, not <laughs> – not the mummy. Yeah. Obviously, I've seen that one billion times. The new one with Tom Cruise, right? The new. I just recently watched the yeah. newer one with Tom Cruise, yeah. which was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, so the idea behind the curses is that burial sites should not be tampered with because they contain mummies, and the mummy's spirits possess dark qualities that would inflict harm on yeah. whoever touched them. Yeah. I think that that's not isolated to Egypt no like I feel like it's kind of 
global a and I mean even thing for even sure. common now that it's like kind of weird to it's, mess with a burial site. It's bad juju. Even like yeah. even like for um f- forensic pathology stuff when they have to exhume a body to do mm-hmm. more tests on mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Lots of people, particularly religious people, get really weird about absolutely, yeah. Disturbing yeah. the you're, burial. You're messing with the whole the whole process. Yeah. The whole soul's process and you know in whatever way that they, you know, believe and, you know, absolutely. It makes sense. Yeah. You, know? you don't want to disturb that shit. No. Just leave the dead where they are. Yeah. Um, says the archaeologist. Yeah, who, fuck. Yeah. Well, yeah, I excavated a burial in Belize, a Mayan burial. Yeah. And we had Mayans with us and they kind of didn't give a fuck because I asked them about it. But yeah. I cried my eyes out and yeah. I was just like, okay, this is how I know that bioarchaeology is not for me yeah. because I don't want to be, especially being a Westerner. Yeah being there it's not my heritage it's not my ancestry like yeah yeah I don't know it's like, a bit weird yeah, yeah. I don't want to this feels really wrong and I'm I'm not I, into it and I feel like there's two camps like I, I like worked with someone who like asked me if I'd ever you know ever dug up any burials and I haven't um and he was like, yeah, I'm really kind of, I'm really kind of against it. And I think that you kind of like, I think, yeah, I think some people really fall into those two camps where some yeah. people are really happy to be the, you know, the, the one to, you know, to do that. And I think there's some people that also feel a little bit, a little bit weird yeah. about it. Yeah. Well, well I, I think either of them are right or wrong. I'm just saying that no, that's just I think like the, um, a personal like choice. The argument is on the other side is like from a scientific totally. perspective and Absolutely. trying to like learn. But I think that also that kind of comes from i don't know where where archaeology itself comes from and it's kind of a like a sense of entitlement yeah, about okay. mm. it's it's what it's human history it's world history like we want to learn about it yeah but then when you're dealing with living cultures which yeah. like the mayan Absolutely. people so many people don't know that they're they're fucking, living, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not a fucking a dead culture. Dead is, culture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So not super comfortable with that. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry. Digress. <laughs> <laughs> and so the cur- so back in Egypt. The curses were supposedly placed on the tombs by priests. Yep. And it's to protect the spiritual journey of the person that's died. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. I mean, we've all watched the mummy. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, So there's actually very few cases in Egypt of written curses Mm. being found in tombs or outside tombs. There's actually not that many. Interesting. Um, They are common elsewhere in the world. Yeah, okay. But there's not actually many in Egypt. It's funny how like, I mean, like popular culture kind of jumped on that on just the Egyptian side of it. I mean, if there's so many, like, you know, in, in other cultures, it's like, why wasn't this? Yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> it's just Egypt? like the, the obsession with Egypt and maybe the few totally. that there are. Yeah. And now, I don't know, I kind of thought that all of them maybe, or not yeah. all of them, but like lots of them would have had curses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they were used most occasionally in ancient Egypt in private tombs of the Old Kingdom. Some written curses include ones in the tombs of Anktifi and Kentifa, who were both from the 9th and 10th dynasty. I don't think they were pharaohs, okay. but I didn't look that up. Okay. Um, like royalty probably or higher ups. Yeah. Yeah. But still just private, not royal yep. tombs. Um, and for them, punishments included loss of honour and earthly possessions, starvation, drowning at sea, and lacking a successor to the th- the thrones of the people that dug them up. That's, like, super specific. Mm. I love it. Drowning at sea. <laughs> drowning at sea. Like, this is, this is what I'm going to give to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, during the Arab invasions of the 7th century CE, or AD, whatever you want to use, um, the Arabs revered the mummies, 
which were an unusual occurrence to them. Yeah, okay. Because in Arabia, yep. I guess we'll call it, yeah. the Middle East, um, mummification was not, it's a, not a thing. Yeah. No. Um, the curses which were told to them presumably by the Egyptians that they were conquering um, were just associated with bad luck for mm-hmm. the people that handled the mummies. Okay. Um, so just specifically the people who were like actually there yeah. at the time in that room doing the thing. Yeah. 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 Um, some modern incidents associated with Egyptian curses, which I didn't know about this first one, is the first one is the sinking of the Titanic. What? Because there was an there was a mummy on board the Titanic. No way. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. She was a prophetess. Okay. Yeah. Um, and her grave has since been found at the site of Tel El Amarna. Oh, yeah. I've heard of Amarna. Yeah. yeah. What? So that's, that's so there was crazy. A, a female prophet on board the Titanic. So there were some people that said that. There you go. That's why it sunk. Um, another story is from Zai Huas, oh, yeah. a very famous Egyptian archaeologist, yep. um, who, when excavating the site of Com, Com Abu Belu, I apologize if that's not how you say it, running theme, <laughs> we don't know be how to going on pronounce forever. things. Yep. Um, so he had his cousin die on the day he was transporting artifact, artifacts from that site. How was? Yep. <gasps> On the first anniversary of the day that he transported <gasps> his artifacts from the site, his aunt died. And on the third anniversary, his uncle died. No. Yeah. And I didn't write it down, but there was another story that he has told, and I can't remember what the site was. It was an oasis site. Okay. And he, and there were a lot of, um, child burials there okay. and he has said so. that and you know it's word of mouth like yeah. who knows but he has said that he was like disturbed by the sounds of children and the only time that it stopped was when uh, a particular child's burial was reunited with the parent burial in a museum and that's when it stopped what that's crazy crazy and coming from him as well he's such a respected yeah he is the most famous egyptologist Mm -hmm. in the world and always has been and always will be probably yeah (laughs) um so like coming from him that's that's and say that blows my mind Mm. crazy um, okay, so the most famous Egyptian pharaoh curse, mm-hmm. not necessarily the worst, but the most famous one mm-hmm. is King Tut. Of course. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. So King Tut, Tunkhamen, if you don't know him, I mean, that would be weird because he's very famous. Um, he was, famous. I can't remember if he was 18th or 19th dynasty. Um... He was, like, 19 when he died, I think. He was really young. He was very young. He had a lot of health issues. He was the son of Akhenaten, who is most famous for changing um, the religion religion from polytheistic to monotheistic. uh, um, Akhenaten is my favourite. Me too. Yeah. (laughs) I love him. And, And he changed the... The sculpture, like the yeah. way pharaohs were depicted, depicted like he, the, the style, he had the pot like, belly, yeah, the pot belly, and like the narrow the kind frame, of narrow when he had like a really narrow. Mm. I love all of the sculptures, all of the artwork yeah. that comes from that period. I just, Amazing, I just love it. It's beautiful. Um, and his very famous wife was Nefertiti. Nefertiti was not Tunkhamen's mother, though. I don't think they know exactly who Tut's mother was, but it was another one of Akhenaten. Because Nefertiti and Akhenaten were half-siblings. Yep. And it was another one of 
his wives or Akhenaten's half sibling wives. I feel like I saw something recently, and I could be totally wrong. I could be making this up, but I thought that I saw something that they might have found his mum. Okay, genetically, like I, like taking samples, whatever, and doing DNA yeah. testing. I think that they have. I didn't read it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the worst. Me too. Great archaeologist. Um, um, but yeah, but apparently, yeah, they found it. But yeah, like interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's – I mean, that was really common, mm-hmm. was did, did you marrying hear- within the family. Yeah, yeah. And that's why, like, Tut died at 19. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen the very rudimentary, like, 3D – The model. Model mm, yeah. of what he would have looked like because he had a club foot and lots of – Lots of ailments. I guess, um, ailments and deformities, deformities and stuff. Yeah. From Well, they think that like there's this there's incest. this there's this theory that Akhenaten even the the way that he's stylized it actually is what he looked like. Is what he looked like. And it is actually like a thyroid or hormone hormonal Interesting. Weird thing, like a hereditary mm. deformity kind of thing or something, something like that. I, I, maybe not deformity. I don't know, something. They think that that might have been actually a representation what? of maybe. Which the makes white sense hips. because that um, depiction of Tut, mm. and he has like really big hips yeah. and like kind of a sunken chest yeah, and like narrow too. shoulders. Yeah. yeah. So that might have been a thing. Yeah. Um, okay, yes. So this is the most famous Egyptian curse. Um, the curse made headlines after the mysterious deaths of some of Howard Carter's team. Howard Carter was the person that discovered, um, Tutankhamen. Tut, Tut's mm. tomb. Um, so lots of his team died and some people who visited the tomb, did that. After it was discovered, died as well. Um, I, I only knew that he was affected. I didn't realize anyone else was. No, well, he actually wasn't. He died like 17 years later mm. from lymphoma, leukemia, something starting with L. Okay. Um, on the day it was discovered, which was in 1922. Yeah. I think I didn't yeah. write it down, but I'm pretty sure it was 22. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> a falcon was spotted flying above the site, and this was perceived to be a really bad omen from the Egyptian workers. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tut did have a curse inscription written mm-hmm. on the door of the tomb. Mm-hmm. So he was one where it, like, it was actually a written curse. Is, is that and it? Is that the one with like the? The, the yeah, there's a really lock? famous photo with like the the rope the knotted. Knot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and the inscription was a warning to anyone that would violate the sleep of the pharaoh. Okay. I didn't write it down, or I didn't read it, but I also didn't search for it of like what would happen. But okay. it was just like a yeah, war. It was just yeah. a warning. Like a I general, think. like you know, it's like don't fuck with this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, on the day the tomb was discovered, a cobra got into Carter's house and killed his pet canary. Oh. And I've written I've written <laughs> that a cobra got into the house. What I read was that a cobra broke into his house. <laughs> and I was just like, I can't say that. That sounds fucking ridiculous. Like I'm just <laughs> imagining like the snake sneaky. like holding in its mouth like a little <laughs> Pick. A little pig <laughs> getting through like all the Ridiculous. locks, sneaking his way in. Yeah, you know, stealth. <laughs> um, Lord Carnarvon, who was the financier of mm-hmm. a lot of Carter's work, yeah, he died six weeks after the tomb was discovered. He got bitten by a mosquito on the cheek, and it got infected. Shit. <laughs> and Carnarvon's half brother died from blood poisoning i don't think he visited anything okay, yeah. more of a family relation yeah. situation okay yeah but just like around the same, same time, time. Yeah. um so bruce ingram was given a mummified hand with a curse inscription on it which i think was from the tomb okay uh, of, of, it wasn't tut's hand okay. so maybe one maybe of his servants or something yeah that okay. was buried with him Mm -hmm. um 
so his house burnt down and then he rebuilt his house yeah. and then it swept away in floods. Man, um, they don't like water. <laughs> <laughs> don't drown the sea. That's fucked. Richard Luttrell threw himself, and I don't actually know who he is, um, if he was an associate or if he visited the site, mm-hmm. threw himself from the seventh floor of his apartment building and died. What? Sir Archibald, who x-rayed Tut's mummy, died mysteriously in 1924. So they don't actually know. The cause? That's Mm-mm. fucked. Okay. Aaron Ember, who was an Egyptologist and a close f- close friend of Carnarvon, died in a house fire. Um, when he, so the house was on fire and he ran back in to try and recover a manuscript he was working on called The Book of the Dead. Oh, no, the Book of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Also another probably bad omen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, Don't mm. run back into a house that's on fire to try and get that manuscript. No. Just start again. Yeah. Um, George J. Gould. Again, I haven't written down who a lot of these people actually are. Um, he died from a fever after visiting Egypt. And that was the last one I wrote. Okay. So most of the 58 people who were present when it was discovered Mm -hmm. died from natural deaths or not weird deaths, let's say. Um, And Carter died 17 years after from from illness. And that's all I've written. There's so – like there's actually – more deaths I just got tired of writing them because (laughs) I'm fucking lazy um love it and there's so much more information about Carter and Tut and that Mm. discovery Mm. and the curse online so (laughs) fucking Google is your friend um but yeah that is the curse of the pharaohs that's crazy I didn't realize so many people were affected Mm. I always thought that um, what's his name? The the guy that discovered him, Howard Carter. Howard Carter. I always thought he died. I thought that was like the no, it wasn't. The thing. It wasn't him. And what I couldn't find again, I didn't look very hard. <laughs> but we hear a lot about deaths. I always thought it was from from Tut's tomb. People that died from like mold exposure. Or something oh. like there was something to do with what I, was in the tomb that was a scientific explanation for the deaths, but then there was nothing about that in anything I've read. So I don't know if I'm just making that up or. But you can imagine though, right? Like yeah. If you're going to like open a tomb, and and considering that King Tut's tomb is actually a very different tomb to other tombs that have been like, yeah, um, you know excavated and found by archaeologists because it was actually untouched like yeah actually no and that's one. why it's yeah. so famous and that a lot of people who maybe aren't into archaeology don't realize is that tut was like a nothing pharaoh yeah he was nothing no and he was buried by his like predecessors like they buried him as in like in terms of even knowing him or talking about him because he was a part of akhenaten's you know his brood basically and they wanted to just gong going again (laughs) um Um, and they wanted to like you know bury that side of the history because they wanted to go back to like their original um i think tut might have even tried to go back maybe from being i have told to i have seen some pretty cool documentaries over the past how many Yes, I don't want to show my age too much, but like, you know, many years of them being like, yeah, like um, there was a lot of pushback yeah. to kind of go back to the old ways. Yeah. And um, go back to the pagan ways. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Many gods and. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, his tomb was like, that wasn't supposed to, that wasn't supposed to be there. No. That's the only reason why it was never found. Yeah. And it was, and it was the most famous because it was untouched. Yeah. And. I think it. Was, I read it was like six million dollars US value of like gold in there, yeah. which was a lot because it was untouched. But like, what the more, I guess, revered pharaohs would have had in their tombs mm. that got looted. Totally. 
Yeah. Would have been ridiculous. Yeah. He was just the most famous because no one had found it No yet. one had found him. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and imagine how much mold and imagine the bacteria, like just, I can, I can see, I can see that being a really disgusting place for you to want to be touching and then touching mm. the face and then like, you don't know what's. I don't know what's been there. Or how the person died and what they might have been carrying or whatever. True. Even, yeah. Just uh, not a very hygienic place to begin with. (laughs) And that's what we do, like dig in the ground. Yeah. Not that we do burials, but like. We dig in toxic material. It's like that site that we were digging in the city where it was, we were excavating residential structures from the 19th century but it was under a 1920s I think Mm. tuberculosis clinic yeah and before like before we started they were like okay we've tested the soil here and yeah (laughs) it's positive for lead arsenic mercury Mm. something else I can't remember what and there was a lot there was asbestos a and they were more. just like, okay, make sure you have your gloves on. <laughs> like, okay, oh, Jesus. Okay, cool. Like, I've got my gloves on, but yeah. also I'm like, maybe like brushing my hair back yeah. and like breathing in this disgusting. It wasn't burials, but there was fucking poisonous shit in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you get that here in in you know urban yeah. archaeological sites. Like, of course, like you're going to get that kind of shit. Yeah, we've worked in so many places that have just crazy shit yeah yeah and it's yeah that's normal it's normal but like we're not dead yet but we we might die soon from something touch wood touch wood it's it's fine it's fine it's totally fine it's totally fine (laughs) but yeah that's crazy that's crazy curses curses spooky shit we love it that's it that's it i think we're done Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Hope you're celebrating or not celebrating or at least watching a spooky movie. Yeah. Yeah. And there's plenty to choose from. Mm -hmm. And hope you liked it. And if you've got any spooky stories or spooky stories from history. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know. And it can maybe go into its own separate episode. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.